Today we are going to discuss <clears throat> N.K. Bose, an Indian anthropologist. He had a proper background in anthropology. He did post graduation. He did post graduation anthropology from Calcutta University. Uh, like any professional anthropologist or any as any one who would be a professional anthropologist and he went to study uh, zhuangs of of pal lahara that is a place in odisha they were foragers and uh, he had uh, I mean, you can see in that uh, work he was he was a very kind person he was touched by their poverty he said uh, i had not accepted them as fellow human beings i could not have gone on just measuring heads and collecting information about the local cults cults of the own folk of or mortuary rites for writing a research paper so this shows that uh, he's there is a streak of uh, compassion and uh, social orientation in him um, in fact before he took to post graduation in anthropology he he did uh, bsc in geology and then uh, while doing msc in geology he he taking a wanting to take part in non cooperation movement he abandoned his studies and uh, he was uh, working on temple architecture and somebody from calcutta university was impressed by his presentation on temple architecture and then asked him to do post graduation in anthropology so he is a very uh, socially conscious uh, person and uh, again in uh, during salt satyagraha he took part and he was jailed for that and during his jail term he reflected on gandhism and finally he wrote a book selections from gandhi 1984 he became close to gandhi later and in the last days of gandhi he accompanied him during his trip to right town uh, nokhali and based on his observations and conversations with gandhi he wrote this book my days with gandhi so this is a general profile and he wrote extensively he wrote on archaeology education social work nationalism temple architecture he wrote in english as well as in bengali and uh, apart from his uh, um, work in the university he had been editor of man in india an anthropology journal 
from 1951 till his death had been director of anthropological survey of india between 59 and 64 had been commissioner for ss industries between 67 and 70 and prepared many reports on the state of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and so this is the general profile let us come to his uh, anthropological orientation in terms of where he would be uh, in terms of theoretical orientation he said he was uh, influenced by french boas he regarded french boas as one of his gurus what is the approach of french boas you know boas believed in making things scientific he was against sweeping generalizations he was interested in studying particular cultures in detail believed in field work and uh, he also believed in inductive method bose is influenced by this and bose also liked approach of one diffusionist by name krober krober followed the culture area approach he would think of culture in sort in terms of certain traits and uh, see how the traits would spread where they would origin and how they would spread from one place to another place so he crowbar combined uh, culture and history and geography this is the approach bose followed in his work on spring festival of india he explained how this festival spread from eastern provinces of india even to europe and bose applied this method in the diffusion of temple architecture also so uh, the theoretical advancement of bose was uh, up to krober and uh, franz boas level um, by the time he wrote this book titled cultural anthropology and other essays in 1929 um, functionalism of malnovsky or of ratliff brown had not emerged as a dominant school so that was a theoretical perspective at the time n k bos was working on anthropology but now let us look at his views on more important uh, issues on and cost bose had very clearly understood that it is tribes that are being converted to caste he 
he explained that there is a hindu method of tribal absorption and this hindu method of tribal absorption are also called hindu mode of acculturation is an important process in creating this indian civilization okay so he knew the dynamics of conversion of tribe into caste and he also believed some are converted and some are not converted so some remained as tribes and some became caste some became as caste a part of larger structure hindu society and both believed this is one very important feature of indian civilization the question we need to uh look at is that how did he evaluate them how did he evaluate what is more important here uh, to me is gandhi had a very very conservative views on caste system he had debates with ambedkar and uh, gandhi believed that uh, there is nothing wrong with varna and for quite considerable time nothing wrong with caste only untouchability is the problem this was gandhi's view and strangely gandhi did not believe hierarchy is a feature of caste gandhi did not believe that hierarchy is an inevitable feature of caste he didn't believe nor he believed hinduism is an inevitable part of caste sorry caste is an inevitable part of hinduism so gandhi didn't believe in this connection gandhi didn't believe in this con- connection so he did not believe that uh, discrimination untouchability domination is essential part of either caste system or hinduism and we know bos is very much impacted by gandhism and he had uh, even uh, some interactions with gandhism interaction with gandhism so how would bos look at this being an anthropologist so and did he try to convey to gandhi that gandhi's thinking was a historical and unscientific that is a an important question but a big disappointment is that bose views despite his specialized knowledge in indian society and culture and his field work don't seem to be contradicting gandhi's views 
which means uh, both saw uh, some kind of justification of the caste system. And when an anthropologist looks at caste system in a justifiable way, he will look at tribe also differently. An anthropologist's perspective on caste will impact his perspective on tribe. So, how did Bose look at caste system? He looked at like this. Uh, he saw something positive about caste system and something negative. What is positive? The positive thing is that a group is given a particular occupation and no other group is competing, which means non-competitive. Unlike in capitalism, non-competitive. He thought that was a positive thing. And then each group is allowed to preserve its culture when a tribe is converted to caste. A part of its culture may remain and also it may have its own distinct culture. So cultural autonomy. And the idea that group basis to both capitalism was becoming was individual basis, competitive. Whereas caste system was on the group basis, non-competitive, so economically secure giving cultural autonomy so culturally secure distinctness can be maintained despite acculturation process but what is the problem with the caste system you would say discrimination He would say hierarchy. Hierarchy. Discrimination. He would even say exploitation. So Bose was not glorifying entirely. He was looking at positive and negative. Discrimination, exploitation, hierarchy. So, is it not similar to Gandhian framework? Gandhi also thought in, the, in similar ways. Gandhi yes, thought that these were negative, but then thought that these were not intrinsic to caste system. So Gandhi was thinking in terms of plus and minus, Bose was thinking in terms of plus and minus. Gandhi was taking only one extra uh, interpretation that this minus is not intrinsic to the caste system, not part of Hinduism. That's all. So this is the perspective. Let us look at what he said. He said, just as capitalism is one way of organizing production, caste in India is another way of organizing production and distribution. 
a way of organizing production and distribution. It is not a way of domination and subordination. And next he says, the stability of Indian civilization was made possible only by the stability of economic center of gravity of the caste system. It is most important to understand this fundamental truth. How is caste related to stability? Because caste not only economic security and cultural security, but also on a small geographical unit, people can live together through interdependence. It means it enables decentralized living without depending on large structures like state. You can see this also is similar to Gandhian thinking that self-sufficient village republics are held as ideals and that is what Indian civilization is. Self-sufficiency is produced through uh, ability of the caste system to supply everything in a very small geographical unit, say a village. So anything happens here on outside, this is not touched. Okay. Then he says, when we encounter what is offensive in the traditional caste system, we should not spare it. Okay. But if we find something valuable in the ancient system of production and of social solidarity, social solidarity, or of regulating the relationship between man and society, something which we may be able to put to use, we should certainly accept it. There are two, accepts here, two aspects here. Social solidarity. Caste is promoting social solidarity. And caste is determining man's relationship with the society. Allotting occupation. Confining him to that and ensuring that others don't compete. So, social solidarity is produced through giving certain duties. And the duty in terms of what a man is supposed to do towards the society. Okay. What is the problem with this kind of thinking? It somehow assumes that uh, all of them are interested and all of them voluntarily and in a mutually beneficial way devised this caste system or it is useful for all. But there are some problems like discrimination and hierarchy. I don't think such a view of caste is right. The caste system is, is created, perpetuated as a, as a means of domination. And religion gave glorification to that. But Bose did not think like that. In fact, um, one uh, critic, Partha Chatterjee, 
in the book nation and its fragments colonial and post colonial histories writes that uh, indian sociologists are influenced by a particular kind of thinking on caste and he attributes this to gandhi and others gandhi used to argue that the empirical reality of caste discrimination and even its a sanction in the religious texts had nothing to do with religion empirical reality. the ideal fourfold varna scheme was meant to be a non competitive functional division of labor and did not imply hierarchy of privilege this idealism found a metaphysical exposition in savepali radha krishnan who asserted that the varna scheme was a universal form of organic solidarity of the individual and the social order since then successive generations of indian sociologists have propounded the idea that this system in some sense fundamental to a characterization of indian society and that it represents a way of reconciling differences within a harmonious unity of the social order so caste as a source of harmony integrity the idea that the caste is a source of harmony is surely an offensive proposition to the lower caste because it is essentially exploitation and so disharmony forced subordination cannot be called harmony lack of violence cannot be called justice lack of competition cannot be called harmony because it is not it is it is some are not allowed to compete prevented from competing however meritorious they are this is exclusion so um Uh, this is a fundamental misconception of caste i would say mm. okay but then did bose want um the caste system to continue as it is no he did want uh, economic improvement avestis avestis okay why economic because bose understood that ranking and hierarchy is related to economy so more remunerative work would contribute to reduction of the hierarchy and reduction of the discrimination so bose did think of development as economic development of tribes as well as castes let us look at this as far as practicable scheduled castes in particular should be taken away from caste based occupations to those which have no association with caste this will at least loosen the ranking system which holds in case of caste based industries in rural areas so just as gandhi did not want hierarchy and did not think hierarchy is an essential feature of caste system bose also want something to be done to reduce this hierarchy economic occupation changes the solution 
then he emphasized the need for education health consciousness of rights and he believed the state should do this and theoretically this is what he said if we wish to set the zhuang the munda or the so called untouchable caste on an equal footing with ourselves in a democratically organized society we should make sure of economic reorganization first if we want to build the new social order on a permanent basis so he doesn't want this discrimination hierarchy and he believes in development okay but he is not critiquing the caste system itself he is not critiquing the group basis of mobility itself so i would say this is very conservative thinking despite his scholarliness and uh, because he did not find uh, that is what is fundamentally wrong. he did not find caste system as fundamentally wrong surely he would look at tribe also differently so for example mm, uh, joangs of palahara whom he studied in his first field work he said they were isolated foragers first and they shifted to selling bamboo based crafts this is how tribe may become caste and he saying that um, now as a caste they have monopoly over making bamboo based products and this he writes thus instead of being economically more or less self contained they have now been tacked on to the larger body of hindu society they now form only one cog in the wheel of the advanced productive machinery of the hindus in the matter of this manufacture of bomb bamboo articles the joangs enjoy virtual monopoly in the state of palahara and no other caste would willingly engage in that manufacture for fear of losing its own social position so when tribe became a caste he is saying it is protected from competition that is true but that is also the, the system also prevents them from doing something else that can improve their economic position why doesn't both think like that so that's one and uh, another thing is both is also conservative in terms of um not only society and hinduism indian civilization but even on views on nation uh, for example he says this that uh, tribals should be developed but he says that we must be extremely cautious not to encourage separatist tendencies and thus ultimately defeat the very purpose of all round freedom such as government of india have resolved to attain what writing this in 1967 by that time so many atrocities have been committed by indian state against the tribals and both believes in the benevolence of indian state so again missing that society is made up of conflict or there is conflict in the society and some groups um use certain ideologies to perpetuate domination that ideology can be religion that ideology can be nationalism so i thought why didn't bose educate gandhi 
Mm. My answer is that Bose himself thought the way Gandhi thought. So one is not in a position to educate the other. Thank you.